This is a WMUR Commitment 2020 special in partnership with the New Hampshire Institute of Politics. Conversation with the candidate. Tonight, Congressman Seth Moulton. Good evening and welcome to our Conversation with the Candidate series. I'm Adam Sexton and our guest this evening is Congressman Seth Moulton of Massachusetts. Tonight we'll be getting to know Congressman Moulton and where he stands on key issues. At the start of the show, I'll be asking the candidates some questions. And then after a break, we'll have our studio audience ask their questions in a town hall format. But before we begin with that, let's take a quick look at the candidate's biography. Seth Moulton was born in Salem, Massachusetts in 1978. He graduated from Phillips Academy in Andover before getting a bachelor's degree from Harvard University. Right after graduating in 2001 and just months before the 9-11 attacks, Moulton joined the Marines. He led an infantry platoon and was among the first Americans to reach Baghdad in 2003. He served four tours in that war and was awarded the Bronze Star for his actions during the 2004 Battle of Najaf. When he came home from Iraq, he got both an MBA and a master's in public policy from Harvard. Moulton then worked in Texas on the country's first high-speed rail line, but returned to Massachusetts, where he ran for and won a seat in Congress in 2014, being re-elected in 2016 and 18. Representative Moulton is a member of the Budget Committee. He sits on the House Armed Services Committee and is the top Democrat on the Oversight and Investigation Subcommittee. He's married, has a daughter, and lives in Salem, Mass. Congressman Moulton, thanks for joining us on Conversation with the Candidate. Adam, it's great to be here. So it's a field of nearly 20 now. Yes. What sets you apart from the PAC? Well, first of all, my background's a little bit different. Um, my experience uh, leading Americans in some of the most difficult circumstances on earth and bringing them together behind a common mission to serve the country. I think that kind of leadership is exactly what we need from the next president during an incredibly divisive time in American history. The second thing is I'm going to be talking about issues that a lot of Democrats don't seem to want to talk about, but that we ha where we have to confront Donald Trump, national security, what it means to make this country safe and strong, fundamentally what serving the country means and what it feels like to be, what it means to be a patriot. For too long, I think that the Democratic Party has ceded these r issues to Republicans and they're actually where Donald Trump is weakest. We need to confront him on his record, not just as president, but as commander in chief. To that end, ISIS is claiming responsibility for an attack in Sri Lanka that killed more than 300 people. We have so many problems, foreign and domestic, but do you believe we've taken our eye off the ball when it comes to international terrorism? Well, I think the biggest thing we've done is we've abandoned our allies around the globe. And you stop international terrorism by having good coordinated intelligence among your trusted allies. But what has Trump done? He's disparaged our allies left and right. He's made fun of the Australian Prime Minister. Uh, he's disparaged NATO. Uh, the alliance feels like it's falling apart. And what we should be doing is actually strengthening those alliances. I've called for a Pacific NATO to help contain North Korea and China. Uh, I've called for us following the motto of my Marine Division, which was no better friend, no worse enemy than the United States of America. That means we stand with our allies. We make our countries stronger and safer together. And it also means we stand up to our enemies. So that doesn't mean cozying up to Putin. It doesn't mean cozying up to Kim Jong-un like, like Trump has been doing. It means confronting them on the international stage and leading with moral authority like we always used to in America. You've been very critical of the war on Iraq as an Iraq war veteran. But as President Moulton, what would the threshold be for going to war? our national security interests. We only go to war if it's in our national security interest because the most solemn duty that a president or frankly the Congress has is to decide when to put young American lives on the line. Congress has abrogated this role in the last several years because we're still operating under the authority, the authorization for the use of military force that was passed just after 9-11. So the first thing I would do is, as president is say to Congress, we are going to rescind that authority and pass a new one based on the conditions today so that we have a transparent debate before the American people to justify why we're putting young men and women in, in harm's way. Do you think that if Congress has given back some more of that power, obviously the power of the purse is there and they've chosen not to use it, but that they would exercise it responsibly, that the president's hands wouldn't be tied militarily? Well, the fact of the matter is that it's the constitutional responsibility of the Congress to exercise that authority. 
and it's the leadership responsibility of the president to work with Congress to get done what we need to do to keep our nation safe. You talk about putting long, young lives at risk. Do you believe that women should be able to sign up or should sign up for the draft when they turn 18 just like men do? I, I do, actually. Now, that's a, hard, that's a hard vote that we took on the Armed Services Committee because there was a lot of concern about that. But the fact of the matter is that women are serving bravely and honorably uh, in our armed services today. Uh, I did two tours as a platoon commander in Iraq. and the second two tours, I had a small team of Marines. Uh, we went out and did special projects for General Petraeus. And my first teammate was a woman. We were a stronger, more effective team. We were more combat effective because she was a part of our team. In fact, she enabled us to be able to talk to half the Iraqi population that we wouldn't even be able to work with. Um, Iraq is a very, you know, essentially sexist society, right? And men talk to men and women talk to women. We couldn't even talk to Iraqi woman, women if Anne wasn't on our team. So I've seen what women can do in combat. And, and frankly, um, they're given that opportunity. I know a lot of women who feel that um, they should have the responsibility of being part of the draft as well. Youth is a big theme in this campaign and in this Democratic race, and you're on the younger end of the spectrum of candidates. Would it be a mistake for the Democrats to nominate an older candidate in 2020? We have to nominate the best person to take on Donald Trump. That's the most important thing. I hear it from Democrats across this country. It's the most important priority. I think it's the most important priority because we have such a reckless commander in chief. Uh, having Donald Trump in the Oval Office uh, is a danger every single day, not just because of the ways that he's taking apart our democracy here at home, but because of the ways that he is literally putting us at danger or in danger around the globe. Playing, I mean, the fact that he is tweeting with a dictator on his, with his finger on the nuclear button in North Korea is, a, is just one example of the danger that he puts us in as commander in chief. So we have got to get rid of Donald Trump and that means selecting as Democrats whoever is best positioned to take him on. Congressman Moulton, thank you for asking or answering these questions. Even harder ones await though. Coming up after the break, we'll bring our studio audience into this conversation. Stay with us.